Hey, what's happening guys? What's going on YouTube? You guys have tuned into Rules for Rebels and in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at Coinbase's NFT beta, which just dropped today. Today is April 20th. It is 420. I'm going to try to keep this video pretty brief. It's uh, later in the evening. I've uh, had a busy day today. Um, and haven't had a chance to enjoy any weed yet today. So I, I got a, an ounce of some grape ape waiting in the other room. Uh, I'm typically more of a sativa guy, but uh, if you guys like a strain for uh, soreness after the gym or, uh, you know, something that's going to put you to bed and kind of, uh, I know a lot of times us entrepreneurs, uh, you know, it's hard to put your mind at rest. So it's, it's a great strain for that. Uh, going to be going to be going to enjoy some of that here in a little bit. So we're going to try to breeze through this video. Um, I actually heard about the Coinbase NFT beta dropping today on either Twitter or Reddit. Um, and, uh, you know, normally I set up my exchange accounts on different emails that I don't use for anything else. So they're not really uh, accounts that I check very often. Uh, so I wouldn't have known about this had I not seen it, but I decided to go check that email account. And sure enough, I had gotten the invite, you know, a while back I signed up. I think I'd encourage you guys to sign up when I made the video initially announcing this. Um, and I signed up, sure enough, uh, got the invite email with the, uh, the code to sign up today, went through the process. I will link you guys to a couple things down in the description box below. So I'm not a huge NFT guy. Uh, I don't claim to know everything about this platform. Um, I did watch uh, a video earlier that was fairly informative. It seemed like the guy knew his, his way around the platform a little bit. You know, check boxes signify that it's a... Uh, a Coinbase approved NFT or something like that. If you guys know anything more about this as we're browsing around, uh, you know, feel free to drop a comment and uh, shed some light on some things that I may not know about. Um, you know, again, I'm not a huge NFT guy. I have played around on platforms like Rarible, OpenSea, even some of the Algo NFT platforms like Algo Gems, and then there's uh, another one as well. Uh, so I do have some experience with NFTs. I've bought NFTs. I've sold NFTs. I've created NFTs. Um, but it's just not a space I'm super enthusiastic about, uh, or super into, I'm not really super into the idea of, you know, buying and selling JPG images. Basically, uh, I realize there's a lot of money in it, but it seems like it's something that you need to follow very closely. And when it comes to crypto, you know, it's next to impossible to really keep up with everything that's going on from DeFi to NFTs to new projects and everything else. Um, and so while I do like to be somewhat knowledgeable on what's going on, uh, you know, I kind of feel like you have to focus on a certain area, whether that's going to be DeFi or NFTs or whatever else. And I, I honestly just don't have the time or the interest to really be as involved in NFTs as you probably need to be uh, to be successful. So here's what we're going to be doing in today's video. Uh, we're going to be doing a little bit of an overview of the platform. Uh, then we're going to take a look at a quick article from Quartz that kind of breaks down what the Coinbase NFT platform is supposed to be all, all about. Um, and NFTs are on a little bit of a, of a decline. Obviously, you know, the stock market's hurting. Uh, real estate is slowly starting to pull back, but very strong. Uh, crypto is down. So it's no surprise that NFTs would be down a little bit as well. Uh, but overall, I mean, even just the interest in NFTs have fallen. If we head over here to Google Trends, and take a look, you know, interest over time, it looks like, you know, early January of this year or mid January of this year is when like interest in NFTs really peaked. Um, and it's been a fairly steep decline after that. So, you know, NFTs have a ton of promise. There's a ton that can be done with them. Uh, but I think people are kind of tiring of the idea of, OK, I'm going to buy some art that didn't even really take that much work. A lot of it is computer generated. It's not even that pretty. There's nothing tangible or physical. You know, to me, what would interest me about NFTs is if I could buy uh, a piece of art that can later be sold and everybody gets a cut of it. Uh, I've heard about things. I'm not sure if it's actually being done in practice, but in theory, an upcoming band could sell their album as an NFT to kind of fund the album, everybody winds up getting a cut or a share. Um, and then if that album or that band winds up doing well, you know, everybody kind of gets a royalty from owning that. So there's a lot of cool promise in NFTs, uh, but the whole idea of buying and selling images to, to me isn't really that exciting. Uh, another thing that's kind of interesting to me, so if you go way back to, was it like 2016, 2017, when Crypto Kitties came out, I don't think the word NFT was really around back then, or at least I didn't even know of Crypto Kitties as NFTs. I remember I hopped on Crypto Kitties, I bought a couple of them, I played around with them a little bit. Shortly after that, kind of a parody of Crypto Kitties came out that was called Crypto Titties. Um, I think I bought a couple of those as well. And then really NFTs kind of, you know, unless you were like really into NFTs or really a crypto nerd, 
um you know nfts kind of fell off the uh fell off the face of the earth for a couple of years and then in what 2019 2020 and, and more recently uh they've kind of seen a resurgence in, in popularity so before we hop into this article from quartz uh just because i know a lot of people don't have a ton of patience um let's kind of take a look at the platform what seems to be kind of the differentiator like why would somebody use coinbase over rarible or OpenSea? Uh, in terms of the design and UI and user interface and everything, uh, Coinbase seems to do a little bit better. Uh, they kind of turn it into kind of like an Instagram kind of feel where you can like things. Uh, one thing that's kind of unique is you can even comment on things. Again, I'm not super into NFTs, but I know NFTs are discussed and talked about a lot on Twitter. But typically what, what has to happen in order for that discussion to take place is somebody basically has to rip the image off OpenSea, then go post it on Twitter, and then discussion below can ensue. Uh, whereas we'll take a look at some of the NFTs here. But one of the things that you can actually do is people can actually comment and talk about NFTs. So in terms of signing up, uh, I know Coinbase has said they don't want to be kind of a gatekeeper. So it's not just a Coinbase wallet. Coinbase wallet that you can use. Uh, you can also use MetaMask, and I believe there's one or two other options as well. The names of those are slipping my mind. Uh, you are basically got to connect either your MetaMask, Coinbase wallet, or this other wallet to the NFT platform uh, when you put in your you know, welcome code or whatever it is. One of the reasons I signed up for this, I thought there might be some kind of special drop or we might get something for free. Uh, a lot of NFTs, which today are very valuable, actually started out as free releases or free drops. Uh, doesn't seem like that's the case. Uh, looks like you will have kind of your own feed. Uh, you can shop NFTs. You can build a community. You can follow certain people and things like that. I'm not really sure exactly what these uh, checkboxes mean. If you guys know, let me know. Um, and uh, so, you know, let's kind of start off. Let's go to... Let's go to trending first. So it looks like the set of it. And I'm kind of confused by how this whole platform works. I just kind of peruse this article. So we'll take a look at it in a second. Um, there's something where these checkboxes signify something. I'm not sure if that's like a partner of Coinbase or something like that. Uh, by far, the, uh, the NFT collection with the most volume is going to be these Moonbirds. Um, you can see how many owners there are, how many items. If we go over here to Moonbirds. Um, you guys can kind of see here just how this experience is a little bit different than OpenSea. We can sort uh, a number of different ways. We can, uh, you know, set a price range in terms of our maximum price. You know, we can take a look at one of these Moonbirds. So this is going to cost you 42 ETH, um, you know, created by Moonbirds, background green. There's some like the metadata there. Um, so I guess initially Coinbase is going to be waiving all of their royalty fees. Um, so Coinbase isn't going to charge any fees. Uh, you know, if you're buying cheap NFTs, it doesn't really matter. Um, if you're buying more expensive NFTs, you know, I, I think most of the other NFT platforms charge 2% or, you know, maybe even up to 10% or something like that. Uh, so you're going to save some money buying your NFTs off of Coinbase as opposed to these other platforms. I don't believe you can mint NFTs directly on Coinbase at this point in time. Um, and you will still have to pay gas fees. I know a lot of people have been speculating, oh, is this going to be like a gas-free market? I can't think of any way that would happen short of like Coinbase paying your gas fees for you, and that's not going to happen. Uh, here you can kind of see the comments, right? So, um, you know, here's one of these uh, moonbirds, you know, so I can say, uh, you know, this is a cool bird and, uh, and, and post it there. Um, let's see, I always do this with... Uh, Okay. Sorry, I guys need to be able to hit the back button there. Um, so then we can go to discover. Um, you know, we can see trending collections, accounts to follow. I, I saw I think I'm following Brian Armstrong, the uh the CEO of um Coinbase. You know, you can see here it's kind of got this Instagram uh kind of feel to it. And just in terms of like the quality of art, you know, I appreciate good art. I, I appreciate when something actually uh, takes some work and craftsmanship and skill to create. And obviously, even in the traditional art world where, you know, you're buying a physical painting or a sculpture or whatever else, you know, yeah, you hear, hear about art pieces all the time that this piece of art sold for, you know, $50 million and all it is is like paint splattered on a canvas. So, you know, I, I don't think the idea that shitty art goes for a lot of money is necessarily unique to NFTs. That's been around in the real art world forever. Um, but I mean, you know, I, I could create any of these things in Canva in about two minutes. So, 
Um, you know, I just don't necessarily see a whole lot of skill behind the art. I think more than anything, it's kind of the marketing. It's coming up with a clever name, uh, kind of building a collection, um, and then marketing that collection well is kind of what makes uh, a particular set of NFTs popular. Uh, but you guys can kind of see how this is like different than OpenSea or Rarible. It's a better design. It's kind of got this Netflix, uh, or I'm sorry, this Netflix. It's kind of got this Instagram sort of feel to it. We can like things. We can comment on things. Uh, very similar to Instagram. And, you know, a lot of people are saying the Coinbase NFT platform is going to be the platform of, you know, quote unquote normies. So people who aren't like super nerdy, super techie, super into crypto, this will be a, an easy way for everybody who's on Coinbase to get into NFTs. You know, obviously there is... Uh, a portion of the crypto world um, who kind of dives into DeFi and explores a lot of different things and uses different wallets and experiments with things and tries out different things. Um, but there's a, a sizable chunk of the crypto space who set up a Coinbase account uh, or a Cash App account or whatever else, bought some Bitcoin, have never bought anything with their Bitcoin, have never interacted with a DeFi platform, uh, have never even sent crypto from one wallet to another wallet. Um, and I think th that's the crowd that this is really going to draw in because it's, it's you know, connected with your uh, Coinbase accounts. So let's hop over here and take a look at this article. Uh, Coinbase is building its own social network for NFTs. The popular cryptocurrency exchange Coinbase launched its non-fungible token marketplace on April 20th, 420, allowing select buyers and sellers to trade the digital collectibles. The platform will open up to the general public in the coming months. You know, I'll be interested to see if we get any kind of perks for being early adopters or if there's any collections uh, that only we can get into or whether there's any airdrops or anything like that. Uh, and at this point in time, again, it doesn't look like you can mint your own uh, NFTs on this platform. Uh, Coinbase's offering is a direct challenge to OpenSea, which has become the most popular website for buying and selling NFTs often collectible digital art since the craze began in 2021. Coinbase, which removed the technical barriers from crypto trading with its easy-to-use mobile app, enables average users to buy cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and Ether with a credit card or bank account. The platform has amassed 89 million users. Coinbase now plans to replicate, replicate this seamless experience for NFT trading just as Coinbase helped millions easily and safely access Bitcoin for this first time, wrote the company spokesman by email. And I realized, you know, for those of you guys who are really into crypto and have interacted with Rarible or OpenSea or whatever else, I mean, it's really not rocket science setting up a MetaMask account, uh, you know, buying some crypto on Coinbase or Voyager or wherever else and sending it over to your MetaMask wallet to then buy. But to people who are either brand new to crypto um, or to people who just aren't that tech friendly, haven't really spent the time to kind of learn how crypto works. I can see how that would be a, a little bit of a daunting task, especially when, you know, if you mess up, your money is lost. Uh, by building a marketplace, emphasizing the social nature of buying and selling NFTs, Coinbase says it's building a social media platform that lets NFT collectors and creators build profiles, comment on NFTs, upvote and downvote others' comments, and discover new collections and creators via an algorithmic for you newsfeed. Now, here's what's kind of interesting about this. In recent months and over the past year, we've heard a lot about, okay, you know, Reddit is going to be implementing NFTs into their platform. You can showcase your NFT uh, as your Twitter bio picture and have that verified that you actually own it. Um, you know, we're seeing a lot of the, I think Meta wanted to get into NFTs. That's kind of what the metaverse is all about. Uh, so Coinbase, if they play their cards right and, you know, they have the user base to do so, Coinbase potentially could kind of make everything that these social media companies are doing uh, irrelevant if they can kind of turn this uh, Coinbase NFT beta program into kind of a social network uh, of its own. Uh, on a press call, let me get a sip of my drink here. Uh, on a press call on April 19th, executives said they don't want Coinbase to be a walled garden and allow users to use any wallet, including Coinbase's proprietary wallet and the popular MetaMask wallet, to make payments and store NFTs. Eventually, taking a low single-digit cut, while well, the platform will only support NFTs on the Ethereum blockchain for now, a spokesperson confirmed that it will integrate with other blockchains in the future, OpenSea also supports NFTs on the blockchains of Polygon, Solana, and Clayton. 
Uh, Coinbase also plans to adopt a laissez-faire approach to content moderation, echoing early sentiments from t from Twitter's former CEO, Dick Costalo, uh, who once said the network belonged to the free speech ring to the free speech wing of the free speech party, as well as Reddit executives who avoided banning hate speech on their platform until 2021. Uh, and I got to say, you know, I'm all for free speech. I, I kind of take uh, Elon Musk's approach in that I am a free speech absolutist. At least for right now, it appears that that's the direction Coinbase wants to go. And this is actually very important because I spent literally hundreds, if not thousands of dollars, uh, minting some NFTs on Rarible. Uh, and then Rarible eventually took my NFTs down because they found them to be offensive. Now, they were still on the blockchain, uh, but I had spent hundreds of dollars for each one of these NFTs. One of them was uh, Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton both naked. Uh, Hillary was sipping on some wine with her titties out, looking all wrinkled and haggard. Uh, you know, Trump's cock and balls were hanging out there. Um, and then it was on a background that said, like, corruption, graft, all these types of things. Uh, and apparently that offended the folks over at Rarible, so they wound up uh, banning my account and taking down all the NFTs that I paid to mint. Uh, so the idea that this is going to be a wide-open free speech platform, I think they do say it has to follow the, the laws of the land. Um, so, you know, we can't have, like, CP, you know, I can't say the word on, on YouTube, but, uh, you know, kid stuff. You can't have CP or, or you know, anything that's against the law on here. Uh, but outside of that, you know, if you want to have offensive images or whatever else, uh, at this point in time, it seems to be a free-for-all. Uh, we'll see if, you know, we're living in the age of cancel culture, if, if people start getting offended by people's artwork and NFTs. Uh, we'll see if Coinbase comes under pressure and kind of changes its stance, but I like hearing that at least initially. Uh, Coinbase may be forced to develop a more robust site rules and content moderation practices, but for now it says it will follow the law of the jurisdic jurisdictions it serves and warn, warn users when material might be inappropriate, sexual, or graphic. CEO Brian Armstrong uh, wrote in a February blog post that we think it sets a dangerous precedent when tech companies such as Coinbase or their executives start making judgment calls on difficult societal issues and act as judge and jury. And we're kind of seeing that go on with Twitter right now. What remains to be seen is just how big a business NFTs will be in the future. In the last year, the sale of Beeple's $69 million NFT at Christie's made NFTs the next coveted crypto asset. And OpenSea has become the most popular online NFT trading hub, generating $3.4 billion in sales in March 2022 alone, according to data collected by The Block, a cryptocurrency news site. In recent months, the website uh, Looks Rare has complicated OpenSea's dominance with high trading volumes, uh, but much of that activity is likely attributed to so-called wash trading, where users sell to themselves to create the illusion of demand and reap crypto rewards. Overall, the number of NFT transactions on these platforms appears to be declining. And here's one thing about NFTs. I know a lot of people have said NFTs are basically just one big giant money laundering scheme. Um, you know, anything with an algorithm can be gamed. I'll give you guys an example. Way back in the day, we're probably talking 2014, 2015. Uh, I had my Fiverr account. Uh, I'd say, I think I had some of my Fiverr gigs shut down. Uh, so what did I do? Because I'd spent a long time building these up. I went over to, there's a subreddit called, uh, what's it called? Oh, R backslash slave labor. And so I went over to slave labor and put up a post and I paid people $7 to buy my Fiverr gig and leave me a positive review. Now, uh, you know, I gave them $7 because they could buy the gig for $5. $2 for their time and for doing that for me. And I wound up racking up like 50 reviews on a new gig. And uh, all of a sudden, what do you know, that gig was trending. So I mean, anything with an algorithm can be gained, can be gamed. Um, and if I create an NFT collection, and then I wind up creating a bunch of different wallets, uh, you know, setting up a bunch of different accounts on Rarible or OpenSea, and then buying and selling my collection among myself and driving prices higher, I can create the illusion, you know, obviously it's going to cost me some money and gas fees and things like that to do, uh, but I can create the illusion that uh, my collection is popular and people are going to make money off of it. And then eventually that's going to kind of convert to not just me doing it myself, but other people participating in this as well. Um, and then I sell all these NFTs and ride off into the sunset. So I think that probably is a lot of what's going on in the NFT space. Um, Let's see if we type in B Armstrong. So B Armstrong is Brian Armstrong. That's the CEO of uh, 
of Coinbase. Um, you know, one of my strategies early on when I first got into NFTs was on Rarible, there was a tool where you could see kind of like, I forget if it was trending artists or people who were the most active on the platform, but I would create NFTs and then I would send the NFTs that I created over to them. Um, obviously, NFTs have a royalty on them. So when they continue to be sold, you know, you as the artist continue to earn a royalty. And I was hoping that these people who are really active and really popular on the platform might wind up selling these NFTs. They're going to have a lot of eyes on them because they are a trending person. They are a popular artist. They do have a lot of NFTs. They're very active on the platform. Um, and then, you know, I can start making royalties that way. Um, worked out a little bit, never really made a ton of money off of it. But here are the NFTs in Brian Armstrong's wallet. Um, you know, again, we can go over to discover, let's see the trending collections. I think that's where we were before trending, uh, board, ape yacht club beans. Let's see what beans is. So beans is literally beans. Um, are these things really unique or do these all look the same? You know, so six ETH, I, I don't even know what the price of Ethereum is off the top of my head, but that's a, a fair bit of money. I'm not really sure what the, what the draw of that collection is let's see what else do we got we got crypto punks let's see what the cheapest crypto punks going for the cheapest crypto punk is going for 25 eth let's see if there's anything else kind of neat here crypto toads you know here's one of the things with crypto so i like pixel art i'm not really sure what the you know i, I don't view pixel art most likely this crypt pixel art was computer generated i just don't see the skill here i don't see why, why i would, would want to own one of these things and even just in terms of the creativity, right? Like it seems like monkeys and apes are really popular in the NFT space. Um, but like nobody's even original. So, you know, uh, Board Ape Yacht Club was really popular. We Then we had like baby monkeys, baby chimps, even, uh, you know, I'm a big fan of JRNY Crypto. Uh, but even him, when he dropped his NFT collection, it was just fucking monkeys. So like, you know, not only is this artwork not that impressive in the first place, but like, is really nobody creative enough to come up with anything besides monkeys? I mean, I get it when something's hot, when something's trending, you know, people copy it, people try to hop on that bandwagon. Uh, but I mean, shit, man, this is all about art. Like, let's at least uh, kind of be creative. Board Ape Kennel Club, I'm guessing this is going to be dogs. Uh, cheapest one's going to be 12 ETH. Um, I'm not really sure what else to show you guys on the platform. If there's anything that I kind of left out here, uh, drop a comment, you know, educate me on it, educate everybody else on it. Uh, did you get into this Coinbase NFT beta? Uh, if so, you know, maybe you've played around in here. Is there anything that I haven't discovered? Um, have you bought anything yet? Have you sold anything yet? Uh, would love to hear from you guys. So I'm going to wrap this video up here. We're about, uh, 22 minutes in. I'm going to smoke myself some weed. Happy 420, guys, and I'll catch you on the next video. Later.